film in front of this giant sunflower. Look how big that is, it's ridiculous. If You Could See Me Now by Keris Stainton, who is a friend of mine. This is her first adult romance and it's about a, a woman who feels very uh, overlooked and unseen in her life and then one day she wakes up and she really is invisible. The first time she has to use her voice to make herself be seen and noticed. This is one of those rom-coms where you're like absolutely furious at how walked over the female heroine is by the people in her life. Like her boyfriend, like when she breaks up with him, he steals like all her savings of like 10 grand. And I was absolutely furious. <laughs> but I'd say this is like 16, 17 plus because it's uh, very explicit at times. But if you're looking to start look, uh, reading some romantic women's fiction and you want something very feminist and funny, then I can't recommend a better starting point than this. It's a Change Is Gonna Come, which is an anthology written by 12 black minority and ethnic writers. Some are established writers and some are new. My favourite was a dystopian story written by Patrice Lawrence. There's some poetry in there, some prose, and they're all really good and I love the cover. So Rainbow Rowell has just announced that she's writing a reboot of the Marvel Runaways series and I've not read much Marvel comics. I love graphic novels but I've always found Marvel a bit scary because there's so much backstory so I thought this might be a good place to start because I'm a massive Rainbow Rowell fan and I'll read anything she writes. I read the original Runaways comics uh, the first volume from 2005. Basically it's a story about a group of teenagers whose parents are very rich and they meet once a year to discuss their char charitable fund and they spy on their meeting and discover that they're not actually discussing charity, they're a group of supervillains in disguise who are sacrificially murdering a teenage girl. <laughs> so that's like the first page that happens in. So basically they're like horrified by their parents being villains and they all run away and live in like a cave and try and work out how they're going to take their parents down. And there's like the typical teenage friendships and romances and arguments along the way. One of them is like betraying them and secretly reporting back to their parents. And I loved it. Uh, there's like a lot more volumes to catch up on before Rainbow Rowell's reboot. I'm not sure if I'm going to read them all because there's a lot of crossovers with like Batman and stuff and I'm not sure I care enough about the crossovers. Like I really enjoyed uh, Squirrel Girl which is written by Ryan North who's another of my faves and I read all of that Marvel comic until they started doing crossovers with like characters I didn't know and then I stopped reading because I'm not invested enough in the greater Marvel Universe to care. Rainbow has said that uh, you are you can jump into the Runaway series with her edition, so I think I'll probably pick it up from there. There was some great diversity in this too, then there's like a dinosaur from the future. Into a Black Book, A Toolkit for Working Women by Otega Uwagba. This is non-fiction, it's really short, it's really cheap, I think it was like three pounds, and it's basically um, lots of tips for freelance creative artists and if you're f specifically female creative artists and how to work freelance and how to get jobs and make money. I really found this useful. It was mainly reassuring because I did most of the stuff already but even that was very cool. I, I did pick up a few things I had not thought of before and uh, if you're just graduated or you're thinking about becoming a freelance professional I strongly recommend picking this up because it really is a great guide to have on your shelves and there's lots of resources at the back for more information. Lady Astronaut of Mars by Mary Robinette Cowell. This is a short story which is being developed into a duology which is out next year. It's set in a future where a meteorite destroyed most of Earth's climate in the 50s so and so space travel was hugely accelerated to find Earth a new home. And so it's about life on Mars uh, in like a very historical like 50s, 60s world. Recruited female astronauts to try and encourage 
women to and housewives to form to join this settlement on Mars. So it's from the point of view of the first female astronaut from the 50s who is now, it's, na it's now modern times and she's very old and she's trying to decide whether to go on another mission to establish a new colony outside of our solar system. So it's so far away they won't come back so they're looking for someone who's quite old but has a lot of experience and so they look, go for this uh, old woman. So um, <laughs> I told you a lot about the plot there, I clearly liked it. Um, it's a very short story, you'll read it in a couple of hours and I'm really excited for the full book which is going to be a prequel so all of the stuff I've just said is like backstory and then she's writing a prequel that actually tells the story of this meteorite uh, crashing on Earth. Mary Robinette Cowell writes the Shades of Milk and Honey series which was one of my favourites of the year and I'm so excited to see what she does with sci-fi after loving her historical fantasy. Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst. This is a high fantasy book about a princess who is engaged to the prince of a neighbouring kingdom and instead falls in love with his sister. Jick is outlawed in the kingdom and the princess, the fiancé, is uh, secretly hiding uh, fire magic and she gets involved in like the political scandal in her fiance's kingdom and has to like save rescue uh, his sister from an assassin <laughs> i'm trying to film a video here guys you don't understand the importance of booktube it can get quite political and the names are all really like high fantasy which i found hard to follow and keep track of I'm not a big fan of fantasy anyway, so I didn't really enjoy it as much as other people might. Uh, so I'm not really sure I can give an unbiased review, but yeah, pretty easy reading. So this is one I read for research for a short story that was just released called Another Beginning. Uh, and it was like about medieval manuscripts. So I read something called the Voynich Manuscript, which is basically a medieval manuscript that it's in code and it's never been deciphered and people have been trying to decipher it for years and people think it's like written by aliens because it's impossible to decipher and what's interesting about it is that it's a botanical and like medical guide so it's got lots of images of plants and none of the plants seem to be like recognizable <laughs> never, nobody's ever managed to identify them which is interesting from a scientific point of view because it implies that since the medieval times plants have adapted and evolved so much that they're now unrecognizable to the plants we see today which i think is more interesting than assuming that this is a manuscript written by some kind of like medieval aliens who left some code on earth and then disappeared because how cool is that that only in like 200 years we can't recognize we can't recognize flowers anymore and what does that mean for how like plants will be in like another <laughs> 200 years it's like that thing about how bananas tasted differently in like the 20s and 30s because that species of banana doesn't exist anymore anyway i'm going wildly off topic i really enjoyed this it, i read a, a guide to the voynich manuscript which had each play, page scanned in in high definition and it had like descriptions of the work people have done to try and translate it and decode it and freshers by tom ellen and lucy iverson this is a UKYA contemporary that in the first week of university and it's told from the dual perspective of a boy and a girl who knew each other at school and the girl, the girl had a massive crush on the boy and they find themselves living in the same halls of residence. Firstly, it's hilarious. Tom and Lucy are one of the funniest writers I have ever come across. There's a line uh, I speed date a Nutella sandwich over the sink, which perfectly captures the freshers' experience. I love the ending as well. It wasn't a traditional romance novel ending, and it was actually the way I wanted it to go, so I was delighted. Um, and yeah, I really love this one. Um, if you've been to university, this will really hit the sweet spot for you. There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This is an American YA by a writer who usually writes a contemporary romance and this is a thriller. But I would describe it as the most romantic thriller I've ever met. Basically there's a serial killer targeting students of the local school and uh, the main character is more interested in her romance with a boy at school. Uh, which is fine. I think it was a great perspective to have that was probably really accurate. 
there were occasions when like someone had literally been murdered in the school like in the school changing rooms and they were just like should we go and make out <laughs> which seems probably accurate you know teenagers have in, like specific interests um and at times it was quite creepy uh Stephanie does a really good job of making you care about characters immediately like each victim's point of view was shown uh in the scene when they're killed and like every time it was like gutting because I immediately loved them and then they died and I think that's one of her strengths is capturing characters uh, I definitely read another thriller by her I think. Brief History of Everyone Who Has Ever Lived by Adam Rutherford this is a non-fiction book about genes and genetic biology and how we can use <laughs> she's really going for it in there and about how we can use dna to track our descendants and ancestors over history so looking at how closely related our ancestors here how genetic mutations cause things like red hair to develop uh, and lactic intolerances um and it's really fascinating it's written in a really charismatic style and it's if you're not don't have a science background it's really easy to get into and it was really inspiring for me when i was writing my new book uh, because it's kind of on a related topic next is the space between by meg Graham. this is an irish ya and it's in po poetry it's a look at mental health of a girl with depression who, who finds herself becoming friends with her neighbour when her dog comes up to her window and uh, it's a look at how friendship and romance can't necessarily fix depression but they can ease some of the symptoms and it was really beautiful and I really felt like it got inside the character's head. Indigo Donut by Patrice Lawrence who won the YA Book Prize with Orange Boy this year and Waterstones Prize for Teenage Fiction. This is a romance between two teenagers from different backgrounds. Indigo who is a foster child who doesn't really know her family and Bailey who is a mixed race boy whose parents are middle class, his dad's a social worker and his mum is a teacher and it's the story of how they meet and fall in love and deal with their differences in society. Sophia Khan is not obliged by Aisha Malik. This is about a publicist who uh, is hired by her publishers to write a book about Muslim dating and uh, it follows her on her journeys on online dating. It's described as being the, the Muslim Bridget Jones because it's written in a very similar format. The fact that it is a diary becomes part of the plot in a very cool way. And I really liked how she went on dates with lots of different people so it was really hard to tell who the love interest was because it was like there were like four different people that it could have been. Um, so that was really fun and it did surprise me who it, is it was in the end. So I really enjoyed it and I'm reading The Other Half of Happiness which is the sequel at the minute and I really ship the couple, um, Sophia and I'm not going to spoil it but the person she ends up with and um, they're, they're having a lot of marital issues at the minute in the sequel so I'm very sad. I hope they have a happy ending. York by Laura Ruby. This is the American edition because it's not out in the UK. I don't know if it's got a UK deal, but it's definitely not out yet. Uh, so this is a middle grade book, but it's like high end middle grade. I'd say that it's like age 12 40 to 14. It's set in like a magical alternate history where uh, it's like a steampunk world where it, these twins were in New, New York and they became architects and they started creating all this crazy advanced technology that's kind of a bit magic and this was in like the 1700s and when they die they leave a scavenger hunt to try and find uh, inherit their fortune across New York buried in all these buildings they designed so it's bed embedded in the architecture and it was so difficult that 200 years later nobody's been able to solve it and um, these this brother sister and their friend all live in a block of flats that were made by these architects and their their flats are going to be knocked down so they have to try and solve the scavenger hunt in a few days before they get evicted and then really historical block of flats gets knocked down. I wish I wrote like Laura Ruby. She okay, from me and my yappy dog, I will say goodbye. 
this has been my July reads and I will be back at the end of August with some more. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.